If you're still left wondering if this course is for you, let's look at a question we're often asked by Intermediate Excel users. I want to get into analytics. Where do I start? If you're already a data analyst, you may be struggling with, how can I use Excel more effectively to do my job? Both these scenarios are addressed in this lesson as we walk you through examples and best practices for leveraging Excel for your data analysis needs. In this course, we will teach you how to use Excel efficiently and effectively in a hands-on manner so that you can more easily manage business processes such as sales, commissions, time tracking, invoicing, vacation tracking, budgeting and forecasting, and many more. To manage these processes, we often follow a consistent pattern. Let's use an invoice management process as an example. Here, we first must import data. Maybe we need to get timesheet data into Excel from a time tracking system. Next, we add in hourly rates so we can determine the amounts to bill. And this amounts to data entry in some form or fashion. Next, we may or may not want to do some data validation, answering such questions as, did we enter too many hours or not enough? Does this invoice seem reasonable? And this is data preparation. Next, with the above steps completed, we can generate timely and accurate invoices that we are confident in. And this is reporting. And last but not least, we need to distribute the invoices to our clients. And here we will talk about distribution methods. And thinking about the whole picture now, we may use the invoice management process spreadsheet to track when invoices are due and if they are paid or not. There is a whole lot more we can do here, but let's keep the example simple to start. Every Excel workbook exists within a larger data ecosystem. This includes other workbooks that may be from other users and database systems such as ERPs, CRMs, and other operational systems. Each of these systems contains organizational data and it is important to understand how all these relate in the larger data lifecycle. Let us talk about Excel in the context of the data lifecycle so we can better understand its role as a technology in the life cycle. In this course, we have a theme of framing the data life cycle using people, process, technology, and data. For example, let's use an invoice management process. In the middle, we have Excel as our technology, and within Excel, we have data. We then have data producers, which put data into systems. Data producers often acquire data and they may perform additional data entry and manipulation steps to support that process. Data consumers often use data for reporting on a process or to integrate data into other processes. To manage these processes, we often follow a consistent pattern. Once again, let's use the invoice management process as our example. Maybe we need to get timesheet data into Excel from a time tracking system. For this, we would import data. Next, maybe we need to add in hourly rates so we can determine the amount to bill. This would amount to some data entry in some form or fashion. Next, we may do some data validation, answering such questions as, did we enter too many hours or not enough? And does this invoice seem reasonable after all of my calculation steps have occurred. With the above steps completed, we can generate a timely and accurate invoice that we're confident in. And this would be a reporting process. And last but not least, we would then look to distribute our work to our clients. And thinking about the whole picture now, we may use the invoice management process spreadsheet to track when invoices are due and if they're paid or not. There's a whole lot more we can do here, but let's keep this example simple to start. So how do we go about creating reliable data as a producer? It all starts with people. We need to train our people on how to use data capture and management tools effectively from a tool perspective. This is training people on the technologies. Next, we need to build good processes using those technologies 
that are easily understood and followed. Our end goal of all this is high quality data. And we can achieve that if we manage the above interactions well. With confidence in the producer processes, consumers can pick up on data that is timely and accurate to help paint a picture of business performance and do it with confidence. Keep in mind that often the root cause of bad data is some deficiency in the data producer phase of the data lifecycle. With that, the focus for the majority of my career has really been around data consumption, and I was rarely exposed to the typical data producer activities. But recently, I've been spending more time as a data producer within my own organization. I believe that bringing a ground up focus to people, process, technology, and data, and embedding into the fabric of our company will help us become a more data-driven organization that can make timely and accurate decisions with confidence. Complementing Chris's experience, most of my career I have worked with and supported data producers within operations, finance, financial and production accounting, treasury, supply chain, and several other business functions. I have witnessed firsthand how trained data producers and optimized data flows, including manual data entry, can simplify downstream data preparation activities and significantly enhance the analytical capabilities for data consumers. I have also noticed that although Excel is a core component for data analysis, in most companies, it is not one of the primary focuses for their skills training and development programs. During this live lesson, we will leverage our experience as data producers, modelers, and consumers to highlight some fundamental Excel capabilities and best practices relevant to a typical data analyst role. Before we begin with the core materials, let's review Excel versions, especially in context of Microsoft 365. With the advent of cloud solutions, software nowadays is deployed at a much faster pace than a few years ago. In that context, Microsoft Excel is no exception. Historically, new versions of Excel were released as packaged retail versions, like Excel 2013, 2016, and 2019. However, with Microsoft 365 apps, the solution has moved to a subscription-based model, where new features, issue resolutions, and security updates are released periodically as per the policies of the selected update channel. The three primary update channels are current, monthly, and semi-annual. Your company's selected update channel will determine how often your copy of Excel is updated with the latest features and patches. If your copy of Excel is included with the Microsoft 365 subscription, you can check your specific version using the following navigation sequence, file, account, and then look under the About Excel section. This navigation sequence might be different depending on your version of Excel. For this live lesson, we will be using Excel version 2006 as deployed within the current channel of Microsoft 365 apps. Depending on your version of Excel, you might notice some differences with menus, functions, options, and other features used within this live lesson. For the best learning experience, we recommend you update to the latest version of Microsoft 365 Excel. So with that, let's begin.